the simple test. They will not guarantee, strange as it may seem, that taking new pictures is on the Mars Observer agenda. They use words like luck, and if we're you know, lucky, uh, we may get one picture in two years. Well, that to my mind and the mind of my colleagues and other people in this investigation is simply not good enough given the import of what you're going to see. So in that light, coming to the United Nations, speaking to staff, delegates, and others, and simply asking the international community to look over our shoulders, to be part of an extraordinary adventure, the end of which could be verification, absolute, that the human race is not alone, seemed to me, just in the spirit of the thing, to fall within the purview of the UN mandate and the UN charter. Then Mohammed, serendipitously, brings out the specific resolution, 33-426. And now we know there is a legal framework. So I am very encouraged that after what you will see this afternoon, uh, and what others will see, and what they will see through the videotapes that are being made, that we will go forward with a spirit of inquiry and verification. And if what we think is there is there, then truly we will have before us a new world order of the first magnitude. Hitler has often protested that his plans for conquest do not extend across the Atlantic Ocean, but his submarines and raiders prove otherwise. And so does the entire design of his new world order. For example, I have in my possession a secret map made in Germany by Hitler's government, by the planners of the new world order. It is a map of South America and a part of Central America as Hitler proposes to reorganize it. Today in this area, there are 14 separate countries. But the geographical experts in Berlin have ruthlessly obliterated all existing boundary lines. They have divided South America into five vassal states, bringing the whole continent under their domination. And they have also so arranged it that the territory of one of these new puppet states includes the Republic of Panama, and our great lifeline, the Panama Canal. That is his plan. It will never go into effect. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. There's a need for a new world order, but it has different characteristics in different parts of, of the world. The affirmative task we have now is, uh, is to actually um, uh, create uh, uh, a new world order. A world in which there is the very real prospect of a new world order. It's about the future of Europe and a new world order. After 1989, President Bush kept said, and it's a phrase that I often use myself, that we needed a new world order. and the hope that each of us has to build a new world order. The pieces are in flux. Soon they will settle again. Before they do, let us reorder this world around us. So that the problem of the Bush presidency will be the emergence of a new international order.
within the next four years we will see the emergence of a new international the order. The beginning of a new international order. But today, with Asia already outproducing Europe, India and China are clearly becoming part of our new order. So, in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, a new world is emerging. It is a new world order with significantly different and radically new challenges. I think its task will be to develop an overall strategy for America in this period when really a new world order can be created. It's a great opportunity. It isn't just a crisis. That this crisis, in the way that has developed, will recover some kind of a world government. Good evening, everybody. President Obama and British Prime Minister Gordon today calling for a new world order to tackle our global economic crisis. And the president outlined his vision of a new world order in which the U.S. would participate fully. We've got to give them a stake in creating the kind of uh, uh, world order that I think all of us would like to see. So I see a world order in the future with a multipolar uh, world order. I think a new world order is emerging and with it the foundations of a new and progressive era of international cooperation. We have resolved that from today we will together manage the process of globalization to secure responsibility from all and fairness to all. And one of the ways it will drive the change is through global governance and global agreements. But in a globalized economy, we are going to have to take global responsibilities, and there going to, is going to have to be some semblance of global governance. Never before has a new world order had to be assembled from so many different perceptions, or on so global a scale. Nor has any previous order had to combine the attributes of the historic balance of power system with global democratic opinion and the exploding technology of the contemporary period. There also exists an extraordinary opportunity to form for the first time in history a truly global society. Well, during the, during the conflict with Saddam Hussein, which he handled so superbly in, in a short-term sense, but he kept talking about a new world order. Uh, and, and, and then President Bush, at the end of, the, of that war, promised he would give four graduation addresses, four commencement addresses, describing that new world order and what America's role was going to be in it. It turned out he gave one of those addresses and canceled the other three and talked about something else. That's what, because they weren't ready yet. That in fact, we're all going to have to give up a little bit of our sovereignty in order to make the world work. And I strongly believe India will be a central actor in the new world order. And this present window of opportunity during which a truly peaceful and interdependent world order might be built will not be here for open for too long. Already there are powerful forces at work that threaten to destroy all of our hopes and efforts to erect an enduring structure of global cooperation. Are you optimistic a global system can happen it, from what it, we've heard so far? It, it, it could happen and in fact it's in the works. I mean, but, sir, just one thing, we could go on about how you know, your family committed all these acts against society, but we just want to let you know the New World Order has no legitimacy. Right, and right. that we as a people are not afraid, and we are waking up to the robber barons and the big banksters who are looting right. this economy with the Federal Reserve. Well... We just want to let you know the New World Order has no legitimacy. Right, and right. that we as a people are not afraid, and we are waking up to the robber barons and the big banksters who are looting right. this economy with the Federal Reserve. Well, you really need to bring China into the creation of a new uh, um, uh, uh, world order, financial world order. What we in America call terrorists are really groups of people that reject the international system.